at places like Bunker Hill, Saratoga, Long Island, Valley Forge, Trenton, and Charleston. After seven long years of bloodshed and privation, they stood together at Yorktown for the first time as a free people. The call went out again on December 7th, 1941, the day that will live in infamy, after the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor and Hickam Field. President Roosevelt rallied Americans by reminding them that there is no such thing as security for any nation or any individual in a world ruled by tyranny and principles of gangsterism. Americans responded the very next day by flocking to the recruiting station by the thousands. In the jungles of Guadalcanal, the desert plains of North Africa, and on the high bluffs of Normandy, America's armed forces made the ultimate sacrifice so their children could live in a world world by principles of freedom. In the wake of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, Americans once again heard the call. They went out from grieving relatives, from the loved ones who died in the collapse of the World Trade Center. It was heard from the mothers and fathers whose sons and daughters had perished in the attack on the Pentagon. It emanated from husbands whose wives had died aboard a civilian airliner in western Pennsylvania. President Bush echoed the call when he proclaimed September 11th, a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. He also told us terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. America's united. America's armed forces answered the call in Afghanistan, on the plains of Kandahar, and in the cave complex of Bora Bora. American sons and daughters were called upon to fight a hidden enemy far away from home. They operated deep in a landlocked country, surrounded by some of the harshest terrain on the planet against an entrenched foe. Today, thousands of young people answer the call from every state and every great territory of this great country of ours. They come from all walks of life. They represent our best and our brightest. They are patriotic to the core. They all recognize the special mission that their country has entrusted to them. Our soldiers personify the values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They also are fully aware of the special risks they've been asked to take, just like every other generation of Americans. But without a doubt, they are the best educated, the best equipped, the best motivated, and the best trained soldiers this nation has ever produced. And I believe they are also the more professional. As we contemplate the sacrifice of those who have given their lives to secure our way of life, let us not forget the, the true meaning of this ceremony. For a terrible price in blood has been paid to secure that way of life for all future generations. The words of Franklin Delano Roosevelt are as true today as they were in 1936, that freedom cannot be bestowed, it must be achieved. Until the day when the world is free from tyranny, our freedom will only be achieved if Americans are willing to answer that call, to prove themselves worthy to be free. The brave souls we commemorate today prove their worth. Nothing speaks higher to the memory of fallen Americans than words that appear on the memorial within Arlington's National Cemetery. Not for fame or reward, not for place or rank, not lured by ambition or goaded by necessity, but in simple obedience to duty as they understood it. These men suffered all, sacrificed all, dared all, and died. May God bless each and every one of you here today, and may God continue to bless this great country of ours. Thank you.